Hey guys. Okay, I've spent the past uh, day or so going over the Pandawa class, trying to come up with a way to not only power level it, but uh, maybe in the future make a uh, a class review, I guess. And uh, you know what? To be completely honest, um, I couldn't get this this class past level 12 without wanting to bash my head into a wall. Um, everything about this class is just counterproductive. And, uh, I, you know, if you can play this class at high levels, high tier, you know, f kudos, man, because this is just stupid. Alright, check this out. Every class has three trees, right? You got, well, with the panda one, you have water, fire, and earth. Um, <laughs> but you're limited in how you're actually going to be able to build this. The way that it works is you're either going to do water and fire, or you're going to do fire and earth. The problem is that in order to use earth, you have to have a, a, your barrel in hand. So the barrel has to, you know, be on the field. And as long as you're using the barrel, you get a thing called Mary. Okay, what Mary does is uh, basically every turn that you drink from the barrel, you get plus 5% damage, plus 1% crit, plus 5 to dodge, but you do lose 1 MP. Now this does go up at 15. Once you get 15 stacks on Mary, it goes up to negative 2 MP. Okay, but we'll get to the, an even bigger downside later. But basically, it can stack, right? Which sounds amazing. The longer the fight goes on, the better, you know, the stronger you get. However, yeah, let's go back to Synergy. I'll touch touch back on Mary in a minute. Okay, so for Synergy, you can't use Fire and Earth because Earth requires the barrel. Okay, and you if you set down the barrel, it takes AP to set down the barrel. Then you're supposed to hit him with a Fire spell, and then you're supposed to go back and pick up the barrel. It doesn't work. So, and you may be thinking, well, why would I want to go Fire and Earth? Okay, well, every time you smack anybody with f your four major earth abilities. You can use triple whammy without the barrel in hand. It's the only ability you can. Um, it's practically your only actual martial art ability on this class, but you're n almost never going to use it anyway um, <laughs> because you're going to have your barrel in hand. So like I said, all right, so you have your barrel in hand, but every time you smack somebody with your barrel, they become dizzy. Dizzy adds 5% of their damage and five per or, excuse me, and takes away from 5% of their resist. Now, and doesn't do anything else unless you smack an ally accidentally, which is why I said this thing is freaking counterproductive. But anyway, so every time you smack an enemy, they get a stack of Dizzy applied, which means they get plus 5 damage and negative 5% resist. So the reason you would want to go fire as well is because you have abilities, every one of your fire abilities, excluding the very first one, your four majors, if for each level of Dizzy on your target, you add bonus damage and burning. And that's just light my fire. And then you got this one for each level of dizzy does bonus damage and an AoE. Then you've got explosive uh, flask, which does blindness and plus one damage. And then you've got milking it, which does plus one damage and scalding. Again, you know, your target's gonna gonna be dizzy anyway, so you could stack some fire on it. The problem is in terms of synergy, you can't stack fire with earth because you have to have the barrel, and if you set down the barrel, it takes AP, you know, so on and so forth. So you can't do fire and earth, okay? Earth in itself is probably the best tree on this class. Um, it has everything in it, but it has a very, very big downside, um, which I'll get to in a minute. Now, you may be thinking, okay, so my options are either earth or to go water and fire. Well, water, excluding the very first ability, again, it's something to do with that, I don't know, anyway. So, excluding the very first ability, your other four major abilities all cause your targets to get dizzy, and every one of them are AoEs. Now you may be thinking, cool, I can make, you know, multiple mobs dizzy. Well, you can, but again, there's a major downside. Unless you're focusing the target that you're making dizzy, you're making them stronger, and a lot stronger. Okay, I mean, every time you hit them with one of your AoEs, if your team isn't focusing down everybody, or all the mobs in that group, you know, this negative 5% resistance doesn't mean jack, because now you're just making the other mobs that you're not focusing stronger. And it's, it's so counterproductive. And even worse, let's say you have melee classes in there, like, oh, I don't know, a sack or an IOP, you know. <laughs> You're going to you're gonna take away one AP from your allies that are in the AoE. It's t a huge downside. Huge downside. You know, true enough, you make your allies also stronger and all that other jazz, but, I mean, you're taking away an AP. It's, it, oh my god, it's, you just want to mash your head into a wall. Okay, so, you can't really focus water 
or at least you can, but you can't really do it in a team environment. So, you can't really use fire, because fire by itself just does, you know, crappy damage. Sure, some of them are nukes at level 50, you know, this one does 25 damage, costs 4 AP. But again, you want to stack it, you want to do the most amount of damage, and most of your fire spells are AoEs, so you can stack, you know, water with fire. However, to get the bonus every single turn, or more or less to keep your opponents dizzy and to keep adding stacks so your fire attacks do more, you have to hit them every single turn with a dizzying attack, which stacks and stacks and stacks. So that means you can't do a, you know, you can't stack two levels of dizzy on a target and then next turn nuke them, you know, and then expect to just keep doing that because at the end of the turn, since you didn't apply more dizzy to them, the dizzy goes away. So it's, it, it's, you're so, <laughs> you're such, I don't, God, I don't even know how to explain it. You're volatile to your own team. It's like you're playing against your own team when you play with this setup. Now, okay, so you may be thinking, all right, water is trash, fire is trash, you can't go that route. He said earlier, Earth is the way to go. Okay, Earth has everything in it. And I do mean everything in it. Okay, you've got this cool little ability you can use without your barrel. Cost three, it does decent damage for the amount of <laughs> it does decent damage. It's not anything special, okay? But it pushes your target back by one cell, and it closes the gap also. So you stick to your target, and you push them. So it's it's not bad if you have a sack on your team, because then you can just abuse the hell out of this move. Then, you've got Panda Whack. Now what this thing does is, every time you hit your target, it makes them dizzy, okay? So you can do, and you can do this every single turn, you can smack them, and for each level of Mary, it stacks on one more bonus damage. So the more drunk you are, the stronger this ability hits. And since you drink at the end of your turn, every turn, regardless of what else you do, it's how you end your turn, you always take a sip, then every single turn that goes by, you're going to add another level of Mary, and this attack's going to do more and more and more and more and more damage. So again, Earth. Great. Okay. And you got Barrel Bash. This ability is... Ah, <laughs> this is an AOE attack. It hits all four corners, or all four sides, not corners. It hits your sides, your front, or your front, your back, your left, and your right. Okay, and by hitting every single side, it makes every single target you smack dizzy. And yeah, this is whatever. You're not going to use this because barrel. You're not going to use the accelerated. It means absolutely nothing. It's a, it's a worthless side effect. This is mainly used as an AOE bust down. You know, to basically smack everybody. It does 40 damage at level 50 in an AOE for 6 AP. So you could hit, you could smack four drillers for 100 damage a piece or more if you can crit. You know, <laughs> it's, I mean, oh my God, it, it, it's awesome. But anyway, then you got lactic acid. Okay, level 50. What does this thing do? Uh, it does 24 or 25 damage for every level of Mary. You get plus 2% resistance. Okay, again, great ability. Not an AoE, but, you know, it's got its own special effect. It's cool. Now, this thing. The downside to the barrel is that as long as you're holding a barrel, it takes away one of your MP. Okay, so you go from 3 MP straight down to 2. However, with Blitzkrieg, and you may be thinking, well, great, now a Kra can endlessly, you know, freaking kite me. I'll never catch him. Ah, that's not, that's not true at all. Um, Blitzkrieg, if you point in any direction, as long as there a, is a mob or player in that direction, you fly across the screen. And here I'll show you. Okay, drop your barrel, pick it up, and your turn. As you can see, she's two spaces away. Well, we could walk that far. Why do that when I can spend one MP to get there? Teleported to her back. Now, she's going to run five panels away. Four or five panels away. I think it's four, actually. Yeah. Oh, too far away. Not. Wham. Fly straight to her back every single time. Now, if I turned around and stayed there, my lock could actually keep her in close combat to prevent her from running. So, as you can see, awesome gap closer. Infinite MP. You can even fly to <laughs> you can even fly to a teammate, but as you can see it makes whatever you fly to dizzy. Um wouldn't recommend that. Uh not unless you want your team totally hating on you for it. Now as you can see, this tree is just <laughs> just awesome. 
right? It's got everything. It's got your gap closer, it's got your AoE burst, and it's got your single target nuke that just gets stronger every turn. You know, the more drunk you get, you know, there's no real downside, right? Wrong. <laughs> Such a huge downside coming, it's going to be, oh my god. Okay, so your first thought is to max out um, your barrel. What your barrel is going to do is it's going to put 11 quarts. Every turn, you take a sip. That's one quart down. So you max this thing out, you get 11 quarts. Me, personally, I didn't because it's too expensive for the amount of quarts you get. Rather, instead, I went with bottomless barrel. Put three in you to cheapen it, just to, so I could set it down and pick it up in the same turn, because that's three for that, three for that, and base is four. So I put three levels in this thing, get it to five quarts, and then move straight on to bottomless barrel. The reason being is because it adds quarts at a much better pace, but it also gives you lock. So you keep uh, you keep targets in close uh, proximity, in uh, close combat, which is you know your preferred choice. You don't want to have to use uh, Blitz Craig every turn. Okay, so you add on quartz, and it, it goes up to 20 quartz, mind you. And you know barrel goes up to 11 quartz, and you may be thinking, oh well, sweet. So eventually, if I get both those two maxed out, you know I've got freaking you know 31 quartz, 31 turns that I don't have to pick up my barrel, and I'm gonna get super powerful. You're not. You are not. And the reason being is because both Dizzy and Mary have a cap. This cap is 20. Which means once the stack hits 20, it can't go any higher. And since you can't apply it past 20, it resets at the end of your turn. So, basically, you may be thinking, Oh, okay, well, so they lose their Dizzy stacks, not a big deal. They lose their massive, you know... 100% um, damage bonus, which they would. They would have plus 100% damage, um, negative 100% resistance, if you kept hitting the same target. And you would basically at that point be single targeting, and you would have to be using lactic acid to keep up with the amount of damage you're giving your target. However, like I said before, it's got a 20 limit on both. Now you may be thinking, oh, okay, so once Mary ends, that's fine, I'll just, you know, start over from scratch, not a big deal. Okay, kind of. And the reason being is that once Mary ends, if you don't keep drinking every turn, you go into a state of depression, and you can't get out of it. Not even by drinking. It won't reactivate it. It won't keep, you know, it, it won't... <laughs> once you hit 20, it resets, you go into depression, and for 20 turns, you are negative all of your bonuses that you had. So if you had, again, it goes from 20 down to 19 after that, so you have basically 19 turns, technically, that you're going to have negative percentages. And these negative percentages start out at 95% negative your elemental damage. So you have 95% of all your elements stripped, okay? Not to mention you have critical failures added in there, and it's just, ah, uh, it's, it's such a huge downside. I mean... You know, because there are abilities in this tree that, one, you know, you can max out Bamboozle, and you can make yourself Merry incredibly fast. You can stack on five, six levels of Merry by your second turn and pick up your barrel. And, you know, you'd be thinking, all right, cool, now I'm going to do some mad damage. Uh, no. You know, once you run out, you're going to be completely worthless to your team. And it just shuts down the entire class. You can't go water and fire, because if you hit your teammates, you're going to take away, you know, that one AP, and it gets worse the higher it goes. You hit 15 stacks on this thing, you're taking away 2 AP. And your teammates may be, you know, building a specific, or maybe running a specific build that requires, you know, that 2 AP, that 1 AP, or that 3 AP, or more or less, uh, like a 9 AP build. You know, and all of a sudden you knocked them down to eight, and now it just totally screwed them over. Now they're like, well, great, now what am I supposed to do? You know, and AP is in incredibly hard to come by for a lot of classes. So, and then you've got other things on here, like, you know, Milky Instinct, which basically means if um, you have a 20% chance that if the attacker is dizzy, you'll be protected by your barrel, which means it'll knock, it'll hit your barrel instead of you. A 20% chance is crap for 20 levels. You know, so Bamboozle is just worthless. You know, even at maxed out, you get 10% madness, which can affect your allies, mind you, which shuts them down completely. You've got, um, this one, I just, I don't see a point in using it. It's teleport the panda to the barrel. Why would you ever even be remotely away from your barrel? You know, every one of your abilities s utilizes it in close proximity. You'll never be away from it. You know, then you've got Ether. This one's kind of cool because it makes your target 
it removes your target from line of sight and removes lock. So it's kind of a cool ability to max, okay? This doesn't get any cheaper. You can pick up targets or your barrel and throw them. So, it, but because it doesn't get any cheaper, it just removes resistances. I mean, unless you're just going to keep picking up and throwing a target to remove 50% of his resistance, uh, that's kind of a point. It's pointless to make a class do just that when you have... It's an entire class, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Barrel we've covered, and you got, you know, Barrel of Last. When the barrel runs out, it explodes and does an AoE of 30 damage. It's non-elemental, it's non-resistance based, it does straight up 30 damage. Um, it, there may be a multiplayer in there somewhere, but I haven't seen it when I actually put some points into it. And you got Master of Merriment. For every level, excuse me, for every five levels of Merry, you get 20% bonus to your max HP. But like I said, yeah, God, you know, you can stack this up, you can get incredibly powerful, but once you hit that, once you hit that 20 marker, you're screwed. You know, you are now a detriment to your team. Not that you weren't already before with water, fire, and everything else. So basically, if you don't go Earth, the Panda Wall is useless. And if you do go Earth, you only have so many turns to kill your targets, to basically end the fight, before it ends you. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's pretty much my rant on the Panda class. You know, it's... I mean, this is probably a worse class than the Rogue, to be completely honest. At least the Rogue has somewhat of a point. You know, I mean, you could probably just go Earth and stick with it, but I just... No. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring your attention to a topic on the forums, um, which you can probably see up here. I'm not sure if it's recording there, but anyway. Um, it's by Carter3, and it's a complete Panda overhaul. It fixes... It doesn't really fix, I'm going to say. It... Um, well, it's a suggestion to the entire class. It, it overhauls everything. And to be completely honest, this is where I would start if I was in comma. Because the way the pandas are right now, they're complete trash. Y you know, they're a detriment to their own team. It, I don't even know. What, I wouldn't even know how to, how, to, how to play without killing my own teammates. I'll put it that way. So if you can, check this thing out. You know, jump on the forums, go here, try to support the cause, I guess, and get this class changed, you know? No panda should drink alone.